Chris Kyle is the U.S. Navy SEAL sniper currently, on a very important mission in a third world country. He is on the rooftop of a building, studying the part of a U.S. convoy that might be attacked. Everything seems smooth until a Muslim woman carrying something underneath her burqa, appears in Chris's view. She hands a grenade to a kid with he takes towards the convoy, presumably to attack it. Chris gets the green light to shoot the kid but his values put him in a dilemma. Seconds later, a loud gunshot is heard and the scene cuts to Chris's childhood. He is in the woods hunting with his father. Ever since he was little, he had a good aim which makes his father thinks he will be a fine hunter one day. Chris's father lives by the principle that there are three types of people in the world. The sheep, the wolf, and the sheepdog. The sheep are the weak ones who cannot protect themselves, the wolves are prey on the weak and the sheepdog are the ones who protect their flock. The man wants his son to be a sheepdog and protect his people from the wolves. Many years later, Chris turns into a young man but doesn't forget his father's words. He is now a rodeo cowboy living with his lovely girlfriend Sarah. One night after a race, he returns home to Sarah, and saw her with a man putting their clothes on. He beats up the man and kicks Sarah out of the house. Before leaving, she calls him a failed farmer who claims to be a so-called cowboy. Chris acts cool but deep down, he knows she is right. He hasn't been the sheepdog that his father wanted him to be. After drinking all night with his brother, Chris comes across news of explosion happening in various U.S. embassies in different part of the world. The hundred of injured and dead Americans make his blood boil and give him a purpose in life. The very next day, he goes to armed force carrier assistance, wanting to join the service. The counselor admires his determination and suggests he join the SEALs but not before stressing that most people looking to enter the SEALs quit in the first half. Chris keeps that in mind and joins the training. Apart from everyone else, he is exceptionally good at target shooting and has a potential to become a skilled sniper. Fast forward after a month-long extreme training, he finally passes the test and become a member of the SEALs. One night Chris is enjoying a night out at the bar when he meets a beautiful woman named Taya. They instantly connect and end the night together in bed. As time goes by, they fall in love with each other and get married. On the wedding day, Chris and his fellow SEALs are informed that they are about to be deployed to Iraq. They celebrate the milestone and are excited about their first posting, Taya, however, is worried for her husband until he assures her that he will return after six months. The troop is assigned by the city of Fallujah in Iraq, and is stationed as to protect the first Marines, who were going door to door in an evacuated city to look for terrorists. The scene changed to the beginning of the film, when Chris is ready to shoot the kid. As the boy sprints towards the convoy, Chris fires and brings him down. The woman who gave the boy the grenade rushes to him and tries to continue the task. But Chris shoots her right through her chest, and then the grenade explodes far from the convoy. Everyone praises him for protecting the marines inside the convoy who would be dead by now if it weren't for him. However, all Chris can think of is the death boy. He never thought his first kill will be a little kid, who probably didn't know what he was doing. As days pass, Chris continues prospecting the troops from his position. He is the best sniper on the team, so determined that he urinates himself during the overwatch, to avoid leaving his post. Who says peeing in your pants isn't cool? After a particular day at work, he gets a total of 6 kill, which is more than the combined total of all his teammates. They start calling him the legend, but in his heart, Chris questions if he is the opposite. Then one day, he gets a call from Taya who surprises him reveling she is pregnant. They start talking on the phone frequently, taking care of each other though they aren't together. In the following scene, the sniper team are in a meeting, where they are informed about an Al-Qaeda leader, named, Zarqawi. Their primary target is the leader and his lieutenants, so if they find anything related to his troop, they must act accordingly. The team continues the door-to-door -door series the next day while Chris protect them from Mayfer. Everything goes smoothly until a soldier gets injured. Chris takes his upon himself, so he joined the search team while his fellow snipers watches over them. During the search, they find an Arabic sheik with his family living in one of the houses that were supposed to be empty. The sheik claims that they don't have anywhere else to go. He wants the Americans to go because if the butcher catches them talking to the US soldiers, he will kill the entire family. The butcher turns out to be one of Zarqawi's subordinates, who could be useful to find the main man. The sheik who provide the information is promised a lot of money and a safe life somewhere else. The next day, the military vehicles moves out to meet the sheik again. On their way, Taya calls Chris and inform him they are about to have a baby. As his fellow SEALs congratulates him, the driver is shoot and killed. This is when we are introduced to a terrorist sniper, Mustafa, he is an Olympic gold medalist, known for making almost impossible shots, and is also the one who has attacked them. 
The absence of the driver causes the vehicle to crash. Dea, who is still on the phone, panics and asks Chris if he is okay, but only hears gunshots in reply. Chris somehow manages to find a hiding spot and spies on the rivals. The butcher holds the sheik and his family hostage, before brutally killing his little son using a drill. Sheik runs to the kid's rescue, but is also shot and killed. Chris don't get a chance to attack the engines, because Mustafa is constantly firing at him, having find out where he is hiding. In the end both the butcher and Mustafa leave unharmed. Few days later, Chris and his team return home. Taya is beyond glad to see her husband well and alive. However, after leaving with him for a few days, she realizes that he is not the same person he was before being deployed. He has turned into a moody man who complains about everything, and has forgotten to enjoy life. It is clear that the things he saw, and the things he had to do have gotten into his head and changed him as a person. In the following scene, the couple is returning from the hospital when Taya goes into labor. Gers turns the car back around and a few hours later, a beautiful baby boy is born. At home Taya encouraged Chris to talk about his feelings and experience. She thinks letting it all out will help him, but he claims that he doesn't want to get into her head and dismisses the conversation. Soon after, he is informed that their team will be heading to Iraq again. She doesn't want him to go but knows that he is true to his job. Upon landing in Iraq, they are told that their mission is to hunt down the butcher, and Chris is leading the team this time. It turns out that the bounty has been placed on Chris's head by Al-Qaeda, since he had killed many of their people. During the first patrol of Butcher's supposed resistance, they come across a family. The head of the family claims that they know nothing about the terrorist. The team believes him, until Chris notices the mark on his elbow that looks like he was hurt in a war. When no one is looking, Chris goes to search around his room and finds the heavy arms and ammunition inside a hidden compartment on the floor. The man is instantly caught and interrogated. To save his life, he promised to help them get into the building where a Butcher is. In the next scene, the troops cautiously surround the building. The man knocks on the door, and is welcomed by his fellow terrorist. He is killed in an instant, followed by the man when he tries picking up a gun. The term enters the house and finds Kofasis cut into pieces with is clearly the butcher's work. Soon, they are spotted, and the terrorists backfire. The butcher flees through a tunnel using a shootout as a distraction. When Chris returns to the US again, he struggles to adjust to his normal life. He is startled by loud noise, which reminds him of the war. While he suffers in silence, Taya gives birth to their second child, this time a daughter. Chris goes to see her in the personal ward and witness the nurse tending to another child while his daughter is crying. He loses his mind over the small incident and yells at the nurse. His strange behavior doesn't go unnoticed by Taya. She frequently tells him that he is never really present in the moment, and it is always thinking of something. She wanted him to talk to her, and tell her how he is feeling, but he is not ready to open up yet. In the following scene, Chris's team is back in Iraq, chasing down the butcher's van. When the enemies start to fire, they respond back and run to the nearest building to retaliate with a better view. Suddenly someone shoots down Chris's companion, Biggles. The group covers Chris while he brings the injured soldier to the vehicle, and was rushed to the base. After making sure that he gets proper medical care, the soldiers set off to look for the terrorists again, this time in fury. They turn into killing machines, taking over every enemy they encounter. At one point, they stop at a suspicious building to look for more enemies, but are ambushed by the terrorists outside. A solder, named Mark, dies in the ensuing shootout. Sometime later, the team returns home with Mark's body and attends his funeral. Cruz reviled that he read a letter Mark wrote before his death. He claims that the letter killed him because, the guy had given up on life even before he was killed. Because of the letter, Chris decided to go back for revenge, since he cannot let his friend's sacrifice go to Vesta. Taya tries to convince him otherwise, begging him to stay for his kids. She even tells him that, he might return to an empty home, but Chris doesn't listen. When in Iraq, he finds out that Bagels died during surgery. In a usual mission, Chris sees a man with a rocket-propelled grenade, getting ready to attack the convoy. He shoots him dead, but then notice that a kid is trying to pick up the grenade to complete the task. Chris hopes that he doesn't have to kill another boy, and to his relief, the kid runs away when he cannot carry the heavy propeller. In the base, he and his team are told that the administration is trying to build a wall around the city. However, a terrorist has been firing at them from over 1,000 yards away, letting them to believe it is Mustafa. The soldiers are asked to bring down the sniper at any cost. Despite an oncoming sandstorms blocking their way, the team goes to protect the troops building the wall. 
They take their positions, aiming the direction where they think Mustafa is, but he surprises them by firing from the opposite direction, and killing the US soldiers. Chris quickly tells his people to change their position and align themselves according to his orders. As he had predicted, he sees movement about 21,100 yards away. Even though the others claim that it is impossible to get a shot from that far. Chris confirms the target to be Mustafa. He whispers four biggles under his breath, before pulling the trigger and finally killing the enemy sniper. However, this causes the other terrorists to hear the gunshot and swarm the roof. A shootout ensues, which causes serious damage to both parties. The troops is about to run out of armor, when a sudden sandstorm hits them. Churz believe that he is about to die and calls Taya, telling her that he is ready to return home forever. But right after the call, they decide to use the storm as camouflage to run away. Chris is shot during the chaos, but to his fortune, the soldiers see him running towards them and pull him up. He survives, so he probably doesn't want to go home anymore. The scene cuts to a few months later. Chris is drinking in a bar when he gets a call from his wife. He still suffers from PTSD from the war and loud noise scare him. Taya encourages him to go to a psychiatrist which helps him a lot. He also joins a support group of war veterans, and talking to them makes him feel seen. With time, he gets over the trauma, and start to live life freely, even though he cannot turn back to his young and carefree self, after everything he has seen. Chris reconnects with his family, and moves to a new house with them. He also takes his son to hunt, as he did with his father. Because a sheepdog like me son, kill a thousand of people. On February 2, 2013, a young and troubled ex-marine comes to meet him. Chris tells his wife, he would be back by evening, but never returns. It is later revealed that the ex-marine, who Chris was trying to help, killed him. In the last scene, we are shown the picture of real-life Chris Kyle, his funeral, and Taya delivering a speech in his memory. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.